This man and the girl are negotiating to use a million won to buy her first time. He undresses to show her his blurry or double body. What do you think, sis? This body is blurry, right? Sexy, isn't it? Seeing the girl laugh happily, the guy thinks she's quite satisfied. So he tells her to sit here obediently and wait for him to go shower. But he has no idea the girl immediately flips. What she's waiting for is an action in bed but a terrifying journey. You scoundrel. Today, let's watch the horror movie Bargain together. This man is Hyung Soo. Today he meets a girl he met online named Ju Young. Ju Young claims to be a high school student because her parents are sick and hospitalized, so she needs money urgently. So she wants to use her first time to get a million won. Hyung Soo is haunted by the first time, so he negotiates a deal with Ju Young. Initially, when he came to this remote village, he didn't expect much about the quality of the goods. Unexpectedly, Ju Young is very beautiful. Hyung Soo pretends to bend down to tie his shoelaces and sneak a peek at the girl's thighs. A million could buy a girl like this, which seemed worth it. But seeing the opponent's elegant smoking posture, he remains cautious. Hyung Soo asks again if this is her first time? If later on there's no bleeding, he won't pay a million foolishly. Ju Young laughs awkwardly, saying she might not bleed. Because when she was in middle school, the principal blurred her, putting his fingers there. Ju Young repeatedly emphasizes to Hyung Soo that she won't go all the way with him, but Hyung Soo appears very disappointed. Ultimately, no matter how Ju Young explains it, the other person's fingers have already prodded. Because hearing it was Ju Young's first time, Hyung Soo took leave and drove here. But now realizing he's been deceived, he's very angry. But anyway, since he's here, he has to do something to make it worth his while. So Hyung Soo bargains with Ju Young, saying he'll give her 70,000 won. Upon hearing this, Ju Young can't help but scoff, dropping the price from 1 million to 70,000, truly surreal. Then Hyung Soo gets completely angry, shouting at Ju Young. He says if he knew the principal's finger had been there, he would never have come here. Seeing Ju Young on the bed saying nothing, Hyung Soo stands up, intending to leave. I'll do it, 70,001, what about you? Yeah, 70,001. Seeing Ju Young agree to the price of 70,001, Hyung Soo bargains further, down to 50,001. It must be said that Hyung Soo is really good at bargaining, using 70,001 to buy Ju Young's first time. What Hyung Soo didn't expect is that the more pleased he is now, the more painful it will be later. Before starting the exercise on the bed, Ju Young wants Hyung Soo to shower first. After all, this is her first time, so she wants to have beautiful memories. Hyung Soo undresses, but with a very bitter expression. Then she steps out of the room, going to another room. There are many girls like Ju Young here, doing the same job as her. Ju Young looks for a set of clothes to change into. After tidying up and dressing politely, she goes up to the fifth floor, where many people are already waiting for her. Ju Young cleverly covers up, introducing to everyone the items in this auction. From kidneys to testicles, teeth, skin, or hearts, everything on the human body will be auctioned off. By exchanging chips at the entrance, the highest bidder will receive it. It turns out this is a human organ auction. The item up for auction is Hyung Soo. He is blinded while showering. Two doctors are on standby to prepare for organ sales. As soon as someone successfully bids for Hyung Soo's organs, they will be discussed and delivered immediately. At this point, Hyung Soo is blindfolded. Not knowing what's happening, he only hears a voice coming from beside him. It seems like a kidney or something being cut. Then, his back is straightened up. The crowd starts rushing over to observe. Ju Young announces to everyone that the official auction is starting right now. The first item up for auction is a kidney. There are two kidneys. The starting price is 50 million won. The second person will start bidding from the price of the first person. So whoever bids first will surely make more. Then, a woman bids 55 million won. People have also started to increase the bid. The first kidney quickly reaches 90 million won. Just as the deal is about to close, a young man bids 100 million won. He says his father is about to undergo surgery and desperately needs this kidney to survive. He even claims that 100 million is all he has. Right now, he doesn't even have money to go back. This young man's name is Gukrail. He bursts into tears at the scene, pleading with everyone not to compete with him. People see him as a dutiful son and decide to let him have it. But one woman disagrees. She also needs the kidney to save her own life. And she recognizes Guk Ryol as an actor. He played a cruel villain on TV. So, his tears now could also be an act. The woman adds 10 million won. Just as the deal is about to close, Guk Ryol raises to 120 million. 
No one else bids. Ju Young tells Guk Rael to come inside to settle and will give him the kidney after the auction ends. Then the auction starts for the second kidney. Suddenly, there's commotion from behind. It turns out Guk Rael only has 100 million. Fearing he won't get the kidney, as his father would suffer, he takes a gamble and adds another 20 million one. If things escalate here, it will end tragically. But there's no better option right now. Ju Young steps forward and stops the security guards, telling them to step back and get the paperwork. Then she tells everyone that it's okay if they don't have the money. Here, they offer roles. There's no interest and no third party involved. They won't even send thugs to your door to collect debts. However, even though they offer personal loans here, it's only for a week. Once the auction is approved, you can pay 35% up front. The rest must be paid within a week. If they don't receive the money by then, it's okay. They won't forcefully collect or call your friends and family. Because here, personal loans require you to put your body up as collateral. If the remaining amount isn't paid on time, they'll come to take you away. Then they auction off the organs here. Ju Young patiently explains while using Hyung Soo's body as a model. Now Hyung Soo is visibly pale with fear. Many opt for the personal loan service. Guk Ryol also signs a pledge to relinquish his body. Suddenly, a customer asks for Hyung Soo's age, as younger organs are better. Ju Young doesn't know his age. Even though Hyung Soo claims to be born after 2000, his appearance suggests he's at least 40. Ju Young checks Hyung Soo's clothes for a driver's license or ID. But to her surprise, she finds a police badge. Hyung Soo turns out to be a cop. Ju Young is now stunned. She asks Hui Suk at the auction house what to do. What if things get serious? Hui Suk says there's nothing else to do. Now that it's come to this, there's no way to let Hyung Soo leave. Suddenly, the entire building starts shaking. The two doctors tremble knowing it's an earthquake and decide to leave. Others are no longer calm. Hui Suk tells everyone not to panic. It's not an earthquake. As there's a nearby tunnel construction, so slight tremors are normal. After seeing customers settle down, Ju Young resumes the auction. Because Guk Ryol didn't have enough money earlier, he now opts for the personal loan, so the previous auction must restart. Finally, Guk Ryol successfully bids 130 million for Hyung Soo's first kidney. At this moment, Guk Ryol is ecstatic, finally able to save his frail father. He even shouts in joy, but as his voice fades, the whole house begins to shake again. Then the entire building collapses. Hyung Soo still unaware of what's happening, uses all his strength to try to free himself from the rubble. After the earthquake passes, everyone is in panic. They wonder how, with a tunnel being constructed, the house could collapse like this. Guk Ryol asks Ju Yang if she's okay. Ju Yang says she's fine. But then Guk Ryol says, I successfully bid for that kidney earlier, so where do I go to get it? Guk Ryol is indeed a filial son. Still thinking about the kidney at this moment, Ju Yang tells him to find Hui Suk. But now Hui Suk doesn't care about this and thinks Guk Ryol's brain might be affected, so he doesn't want to talk to him. There's a large hole in the middle of the house, so Hui Suk tells the staff to push Guk Ryol down. Hui Suk then instructs the guards to find an escape route, leaving only him and Ju Yang here. At this point, Ju Yang tells Hui Suk that the situation is ripe for exploitation, asking if he wants to make a big sum of money. Just the two of them joining forces, taking advantage of the chaos to bamboozle the boss, they can get all the money. Suddenly, there's another upheaval. Hyung Soo falls into the pit as well. Hui Suk grabs Ju Yang's hand, but says he can deceive the boss alone, so there's no need for cooperation. Then he throws Ju Yang into the pit. Ju Yang falls into the pit of the swimming pool and is pulled up by a man. This is the basement of the entire building, also where corpses are processed, because the corpses from the organ trade are all ground up here. Then they're dumped into the pond for fish food. There are two employees here. Their names are Mac and Min. The two work in the basement all year round, so their minds are a bit abnormal. Ju Yang wants to escape from here, but this door can't be opened from the inside, only from the outside. Seeing Ju Yang trying to escape, Mac asks why she fell down here. Ju Yang says Hui Suk wanted to deceive the boss so she had to go out to save someone. Mac grabs Ju Yang by the collar and tells her not to lie. Hui Suk and I are as close as brothers, so that can't be true. Ju Yang cries and begs Mac to forgive her. A moment later, Mac and Min discover that Hyun Su still hasn't checked out. After falling into the pool, he only drank a little water but didn't drown. Mac and Min are preparing to dispose of Hyun Su when he hurriedly says he's a policeman. It's better not to speak, things will only get worse after you speak, brother. Min approaches Hyun Su, 
and punches him hard in the face. After three blows, Hyun Su quickly loses consciousness. Ju Yang takes advantage of their distraction to try to escape, but the only way out is through the ventilation fan. But the fan is too high, so she needs assistance. Ju Yang throws many steel rods into the grinder, then turns it on. With the grinding machine's noise, it will quickly encounter a solid obstruction. Mac doesn't know what's happening. Min can only quickly get to repairing the machine. At this point, Ju Yang has reached Hyun Su and slaps him hard across the face. Then she says she will untie him now. But he has to help her. I'm a cop, I'll help you, just relax, Hyun Su says. Ju Yang helps him untie. Hyun Su has been blindfolded for too long, so moving around is a bit inconvenient. The two arrive at the ventilation fan. Ju Yang lifts Hyun Su onto her shoulders, removes the fan, and then she jumps up and crawls through to the outside. Hyun Su thought she would open the door but it wasn't the case. At this point, the two perverts have also noticed what's happening here. Min pushes Hyun Su to the ground and brutally tortures him. Just as he is about to turn Hyun Su into gold, a man plunges a stake into Min's back. It turns out to be Guk Ryol appearing. Suddenly Ju Yang opens the door. The two see this and quickly run outside. Then they lock the door from the inside. Ju Yang tells them to follow her because the path ahead is a bit difficult. Despite Hyun Su's frenzy, there's no better option now. He finds a pair of shoes and puts them on, while Guk Rayol puts a coat on him. Hyun Su is deeply moved, thinking Guk Rayol likes him. After saying this, he intends to find Ju Yang, but Guk Rayol carries an axe and follows Hyun Su, because what Guk Rayol likes is not Hyun Su but his kidney. After all, he's paid for that kidney. So now it belongs to Guk Rayol. Hyun Su doesn't understand what Guk Rayol is saying. Don't pretend. Pretend what? I don't understand what you're saying. The kidney. What kidney? Guk Ryol immediately grabs Hyun Su and points to himself, saying he's paid for this kidney. He needs this kidney because his father is still in the hospital waiting for a transplant. Hyun Su remains silent. He tells Guk Ryol that he is a police officer, a detective for sure. Hyun Su tells Guk Ryol to find the seller and get his kidney. Guk Ryol once again aims at Ju Yang. Ju Yang is helpless by now but still cautious. The main thing is to get out, isn't it? Let's discuss further once we're out. The three try to open the door, but outside is blocked by rocks. This makes Hyun Su lose his temper again. He gets mad at Guk Ryol, saying he won't give up his kidney. Finally, Guk Ryol gets angry and throws Hyun Su to the ground, grabs his neck tightly. Hyun Su struggles desperately, but he's no match for Guk Ryol, admitting defeat. Guk Ryol tells Hyun Su that whether he's a cop or a prosecutor, the money has been paid. So he must hand over the kidney. While Hyun Su and Guk Ryol were discussing the kidney, they suddenly realized that Ju Yang had disappeared. Both of them are unfamiliar with this place, not knowing where to go now, how to escape from this hellhole. Suddenly they see Mac and Min chasing after them. If caught this time, there will surely be no happy ending. So, they both decide to climb up, but this pit is too high. Guk Ryol brings a stool and clings to the iron bar to climb up. After climbing up, he throws down a rope, telling Hyun Su to grab it so he can pull him up. His sole purpose of rescuing Hyun Su is because of the kidney. Once they're upstairs, Hyun Su wants to cut ties with Guk Ryol, pretending to seek an escape route outward, but truly aiming to escape from Guk Ryol, because Guk Ryol's intense fixation on his kidney gives him a chilling feeling. But despite Guk Ryol's foolishness, he's not stupid. He can't let the kidney out of his sight. Are you out of your mind? Why do we have to stick together? Damn it, suddenly, Hyun Su and Guk Ryol discover that the two lunatics are chasing them, so they have to find a temporary hiding place. Hyun Su opens a door, quickly steps inside, then closes the door, trapping Guk Ryol outside. Now there's no need to worry about the kidney anymore. He hears arguing outside the door. Then there's silence. Glancing around the room, it seems to be a dormitory. Hyun Su looks in the mirror, notices his dry skin and quickly sprays some moisturizing lotion. Suddenly, there's the sound of a scuffle outside. He quickly finds something to use as a weapon. But the chances of subduing Mac with a flip-flop seem slim. Hyun Su eventually settles for a bottle of insect repellent. By now, the door has been smashed open. Mac strides in aggressively and pulls Hyun Su out. Just as they're about to subdue him, Min calls for Mac, revealing that they too are seeking an escape route to rescue the boss. Once they leave, Guk Ryol emerges from the side. Hyun Su, terrified, uses himself as a shield. Guk Ryol decides to subdue Hyun Su and retrieve the kidney. They exchange blows. 
Hyun Su inadvertently pushes Gukrail into the pit. Self defense. I am acting in self defense. Surprisingly, Hyun Su sees Ju Yang nearby. She throws him clothes and leads him to find a secret passage. Ju Yang suggests climbing up from there and lets Hyun Su go first. Hyun Su climbs up through the pipeline. Ju Yang follows. Suddenly, someone grabs her and pulls her up. It turns out to be former organ auction clients. They interrogate Ju Yang and Hyun Su. Quickly, everyone understands the situation. Because Hui Suk wants control, she wants to subdue the boss. Then everyone else. Upon hearing this, the clients turn pale with fear for their safety. They band together. But now, facing Hyun Su and Ju Yang, they quickly divide into two groups. One thinks Hyun Su and Ju Yang should join them. The other believes they should subdue them, as rumors suggest Hyun Su is a cop. Conflict between the two factions escalates. Finally, they even begin to fight fiercely. The winning side considers Ju Yang and Hyun Su as allies. So they take Ju Yang hostage. Intending to force Hyun Su to the first floor to find a phone and call for help. Hyun Su, however, climbs from the secret passage to the first floor. Fearing encountering enemies, he enters another room to search for a more potent weapon but finds no sword, gun, knife, or similar. He only sees women's clothing and lingerie. Suddenly, Hyun Su has an idea when he looks at a pair of stockings in his hand. He stuffs the stockings with the makeup and creates an improvised flail. Carefully, Hyun Su takes his improvised weapon out into the hallway. Suddenly, a noise comes from a corner. Just as he's about to throw his weapon, he sees Gukrail, and he immediately panics and runs away. He never expected Gukrail to still be alive. Hyun Su rushes into a room. Gukrail drills a hole in the door and speaks to Hyun Su. He's already bought the kidney, yet Hyun Su dared to run away. Damn it. This time, he'll cut both kidneys to teach him a lesson. The previous escape attempt made Gukrail very angry. No matter what explanation Hyun Su gives now, he just wants to take the kidneys and leave. Suddenly, a voice from outside interrupts. It turns out to be from this gang. They're searching everywhere to stop organ trafficking, ready to seize anyone they encounter. Hyun Su opens the door to find the gangsters confronting Gukrail. At the same time, the gangster notices him too. With no other choice, Hyun Su throws his improvised weapon, but unfortunately, it misses. However, the gangster's weakness is immediately exposed. Gukrail quickly gains the upper hand, pressing his opponent to the ground and delivering powerful physical blows. Hyun Su tells Gukrail that he just saved him. So could they overlook the kidney matter? Gukrail tells Hyun Su that he has already kidnapped a total of seven people here. Then he rolls up his sleeves, saying his father is still waiting at the hospital. If there weren't only one kidney left, he wouldn't have come here to buy it in the first place. So even if Hyun Su loses one kidney, it won't be a big deal. If he agrees, Gukrail will safely take him out of here. But if Hyun Su wants to escape, he'll take both kidneys. Seeing Gukrail so agitated, Hyun Su claims to be a police officer here to investigate this organ trafficking organization. Hearing this, Gukrail becomes even more agitated. All he needs now is the kidney. Hyun Su has never seen someone so stubborn. His life is about to end, yet he still insists on getting the kidney at all costs. But now, Hyun Su is also helpless, so he tries to calm Gukrail's emotions. He says he can buy a kidney for Gukrail because he once spent 100 million to buy one kidney. When he returns, he can rely on his connections to help Gukrail buy a kidney for 10 million won. By then, he will surely be able to save his father. But Gukrail doesn't let Hyun Su leave, so Hyun Su can only make one promise. If I go out and can't find a kidney, I'll give my own kidney to your father, I swear. Gukrail doesn't believe Hyun Su's lies. Then he takes a phone out of his pocket. It turns out that Hyun Su's phone has always been in Gukrail's hands, but it seems that the building blocks the signal so the phone doesn't receive any signal at all. After that, Hyun Su found a phone belonging to one of the gangsters and told Gukrail to take this phone. Hyun Su deceived Gukrail and said that the backup team is the police force already present here. They are waiting on the fourth floor, so he told Gukrail to go up to the fourth floor and wait for a while, but in reality, they are on the first floor. The clients are on the third floor. And the fourth floor is the headquarters of the organ trafficking organization being held by Hui Suk. Hyun Su told Gukrail to go up to the fourth floor to fight Hui Suk, but Gukrail truly believed Hyun Su's lies. After Gukrail reached the fourth floor, he was indeed captured. Hyun Su finally escaped from Gukrail. Then he went up to the third floor, but Ju Yang was no longer there, and those who previously caught Ju Yang were all gone. He opened the toilet door and saw Ju Yang pulling someone into the pipeline. 
Zhu Yang asked Hyun Su for help. They stuffed the guy into a pipeline and climbed into a room along with it. It turns out this man is Zhu Yang's friend. They are both involved in organ trafficking. However, they were both sold here as slaves to make money. The man had stopped breathing. Hyun Su and Zhu Yang laid him on the bed. Zhu Yang took a rifle from the kimchi box, with only six bullets left. She told Hyun Su that she was sold to this organization as a teenager. They even implanted a tracking device at the back of her head. Once, Zhu Yang managed to escape from here but was caught again because of the device on her head. As punishment, they took one of Zhu Yang's kidneys. So Zhu Yang holds a grudge and wants to revenge with her friend against those here. Then they plan to escape. Unexpectedly, now there's an earthquake, and her friend is gone. Zhu Yang hopes Hyun Su will cooperate with her. Hyun Su says he's a cop. His purpose here is to investigate people like her. But Zhu Yang asked him why he would pay from 1 million won down to 70,000 won just to sleep with her. And even took a shower. Hyun Su uncomfortably remained silent, unable to say anything. Then Zhu Yang told him that each time an auction starts, there's at least 10 billion in liquidity. If Hyun Su cooperates with her, they can take down this organ trafficking organization together. Then split that sum between them. Hyun Su, being a regular bureaucrat, earns little each month. The prospect of making a lot of money excites him greatly. As they discuss the percentage split, someone approaches through the pipe. And he's cutting through the pipe with a knife. Once this person breaks into the house, Hyun Su pulls him down. Then wrestles him back, wrapping him up like a mummy. After several questions, the man tells them that the organization now only has six people left. And Zhu Yan's gun only has six bullets, just enough to deal with them. Hyun Su tells Zhu Yang that he's willing to help. But the split has to be 70, 30. After all, as a government employee following Zhu Yang into such perilous situations, he deserves more money. So, he should get the larger share. Zhu Yang quickly agrees, saying she doesn't need a penny. Meaning, she's fine with no payment if they manage to capture those scoundrels. The decisive battle is about to begin. And Hyun Su is very frightened. So, he takes off his clothes and starts warming up. Then he finds many books in the room and tells Zhu Yang to wrap duct tape around herself. That way, they have makeshift bulletproof vests. The two approach the office door on the fourth floor. This is where the organ trafficking organization operates. They ring the doorbell. And a gangster comes to open it. Zhu Yang delivers a blow to his head. And they both rush into the office. Hyun Su is shocked that Guk Rael is still alive. And he even holds the boss hostage. Hui Suk tells them that only the boss knows where the money is now. As he's been interrogating him for a long time but hasn't found out yet. However, with Guk Rael holding the boss, the lead is at a standstill. Hui Suk wants to cooperate with the two. Even suggesting that Hyun Su should capture Zhu Yang first. Then deal with Guk Rael. This way, they could force the boss to reveal where the money is. But Hyun Su doesn't trust him at all. At this point, Guk Rael has lost too much blood. And he's barely holding on. He tells Hyun Su, if he doesn't give him the kidney, he'll turn the boss into gold, not allowing anyone to get the money. Unexpectedly, Zhu Yang, harboring deep hatred towards the boss, immediately shoots him. As Hui Suk is about to retaliate, Hyun Su pins him against the wall, then wildly stabs him repeatedly with a knife. Zhu Yang pushes Hyun Su aside to stab Hui Suk herself several times. Now Hui Suk and the boss are dead. Hyun Su is nearly hysterical. He asks Zhu Yang why she killed the boss. Unable to find the money anymore. Zhu Yang says, what good is money anyway? Because earlier, she saw outside look like here. All destroyed by the earthquake. Hyun Su doesn't believe her. Goes to where Hui Suk was and takes everything valuable from him. Trying to salvage whatever he can. Then he goes to the boss. Prepared to search for other valuable items. But then discovers multiple needle marks on the old man's arm. Realizing he's addicted to morphine. Zhu Yang goes to the desk, grabs an axe, then chops off the boss's hand, using it to unlock the fingerprint scanner, opening the safe in this room. Hyun Su, thinking it's money, quickly grabs the bag and runs over, but upon looking inside, only finds numerous vials of medicine. Zhu Yang explains these are morphine vials, used for pain relief and to stop bleeding, and mentions that currently, these are more valuable than money. Suddenly, Guk Ryol wakes up, his first words demanding the kidney from Hyun Su and saying that if he promises to give him the kidney, he'll reveal where the money is hidden. Hyun Su promises to give his kidney to Guk Ryol's father. So Guk Ryol just looks up at the ceiling and says earlier, boss kept staring up there. So maybe the money is hidden up there on the ceiling. The two quickly approach. And when Zhu Yang opens it, indeed there's a safe inside. 
Hyun Su opens a box nearby and finds a fingerprint lock. Ju Yang grabs boss's hand and tries to use it to unlock, but fails. Hyun Su says this hand is coated with resin. It needs to be cleaned for the fingerprint to register. He tries again after cleaning it, and indeed it works. They step aside. A lot of money falls from above. Now Hyun Su is ecstatic, but Ju Yang doesn't care. She grabs the bag and goes to the desk, stuffing all the morphine inside. Hyun Su puts the money in his bag, wishing he had a few more bags now. Suddenly, the house starts to shake. They have to leave quickly. At this moment, Guk Ryol arrives, still thinking about Hyun Su's kidney. Hyun Su says the remaining money will let Guk Ryol buy another kidney. After saying that, he leaves. Guk Ryol grabs Ju Yan's leg, so she opens three lots, giving him a bottle of morphine and a syringe, stating that it can help alleviate pain. After that, Hyun Su and Ju Yan run outside, but now all the exits are blocked. They only have one way out which is to go down to the basement. Because the basement pond connects to an external reservoir, they can escape through that route. So the two immediately jump down, then hang on to the edge of the pond. They find the pipe valve and turn it together. Seeing a swirl in the pond, the two decide to jump in, following the water flow and escaping into the external reservoir. Ju Yang jumped down first, Hyun Su followed closely behind. The two of them were swept away by the current. When they surfaced, they realized they had reached the outside world. Upon climbing onto the shore, they saw that the hotel where they had stayed had been completely reduced to rubble. Suddenly, Ju Yang spotted someone. Upon closer inspection, she recognized it was Guk Ryol. It must be said that Guk Ryol's fate is quite remarkable. He said that after using the morphine, he jumped into the reservoir in the basement, and then he was carried here by the current. After saying this, he still demanded Hyun Su's kidney. Suddenly, Hyun Su's phone rang but he realized there was no signal at all. The three of them walked up the mountain together. The sight before them left them stunned. The distant city had turned into rubble, as if Doomsday had arrived. It seems that everything Zhu Yang said earlier was true. Indeed, the situation outside is not stable either. Therefore, how will the three of them survive this disaster? This concludes the review of the movie. Let's look forward to part two. Now, bye-bye.